Tonight's sponsorship was made possible thanks to the hard work and support of a few key employees. That's group customers own Jeff McCown and the volunteer members of the Leaf Club, including Mary Urquhart, Rosemary Gross, Tina Sagan, and Michelle Turner. Once again, let me hear you from the Upper Deck, Blood and Life, Great West Life, and Canada Life. Now, fans, our 50 50 charity here today is the United Way from Elgin and Middlesex. We are thrilled to host them and the United Way Hoopla today, sponsored by Intact Insurance. Proceeds from tonight's 50 50 are going to directly to United Way, supporting more than 110 programs in Elgin and here in Middlesex County. Stay tuned at halftime. We'll see how many United Way volunteers, donors, and supporters it takes to change the odds in our community. We're going to do a ceremony to tip-off. Please welcome Kelly Zigner, CEO of the United Way, and Zachary Payetz, who first encountered the United Way through Big Brothers. We'll get up to center court, representing the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders, Cordell Janty, and representing your London Lightning, Brian Akinkubi.
Folks, welcome to this evening's Nostrum TV broadcast of the hometown London Lightning versus the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders. We apologize for the technical delay, a little bit of uh, in-house uh, scoreboard issues. We know but, for uh, sure the horn works, though. Yeah, the we horn is sure working. Horn we, uh, we can all mention that, yeah. Uh, so, Chris, starting lineups today, why don't you uh, take us through a few for the Lightning and the Highlanders? Well, again, just announced for London Lightning, it's very similar to look to what we've seen from them lately. Mo Bolden, Kyle Johnson, Doug Herring Jr., Garrett Williamson, and Royce White. Really a lot of guys, a lot of guys who have been starting most of the time. Kyle Johnson, a guy who's been spending some time on the bench, uh, getting into that starting lineup here tonight. Of course, London shorthanded, missing guys like Julian Boyd, Ryan Anderson. Some of the staples of that lineup not able to play tonight. Looking at the Cape Breton Highlanders, Bruce Massey Jr., Antonio Biglow, Tydron Beattie, Malik Story, and Chris Braswell. Tydron Beattie's a guy I really like. I loved him when he was with the Moncton Miracles. And uh, just a really good physical player, able to do a lot of things well for this Cape Breton team. It's going to be a struggle for them tonight, but maybe you can catch London napping a bit. London looking ahead to playoffs. And Cape Breton, a team hungry, trying to get into the playoffs, could catch them by surprise. Yeah, the Highlanders, unfortunately, on a little bit of a cold streak, seven straight losses for them. Uh, they'll basically need to win out and get some help to get themselves into the playoffs. And uh, they'll need a victory here tonight to assure that. Uh, basically, uh, shorthandedness on both sides here. The Lightning and the Highlanders only carrying 10 men between their starters and the bench. Uh, as you've mentioned, missing a few players for suspension and injury, and the Lightning, even though he was announced, are missing head coach Keith Vassell. Yeah, Keith, Keith Vassell, uh, Kirk Williams Jr., and Ryan Anderson all out with suspensions, uh, and then Joel Friesen and Julian Boyd both sitting out with injuries as well. Uh, so the London Lightning very short-handed, and the Highlanders rarely roll more than eight players to begin with anyway, so we were kind of joking on the over-under. Are 16 players even going to see the floor tonight? We'll see. So Mo Bolden wins the tip off for the Lightning. Herring Jr. now controls the ball. Uh, great crowd here tonight in the Budweiser Gardens. Uh, they are real behind the team despite the delay. That's Williamson. He'll take the jumper just inside. No, no good. That's Tydron Beatty grabbing the rebound there. Beats Broswell. Three ball, no good. Herring Jr. controlling the ball over the timeline. Over to Williamson. Williamson down low to White. He's going to do spin. Tries to make a move under the basket. Feeds Williamson. He'll throw a floater up way short. Really good defense on the interior there by Braswell. Made it very difficult for Royce White to make any space there. And then held his ground. Royce, we usually see him, you know, bumping shoulders, getting that space for himself. Braswell stood strong. This is Antonio Bigloaf. Feeds the ball over to, to Malik Story. Story. Over to Braswell. Braswell, that's going to be a long two. Highlander with the two Highlanders with the first two points of the game. And I think both teams came out here realizing a strong start was going to be very important. London, very much a strong starter almost every game this year. So I think the Highlanders wanted to come out and make a statement that we're going to keep up with you. Royce White controlling the ball. Makes a tough move into the interior. He'll get two and one. The fans show their appreciation as they take their seat. About a minute 20 into the game. So Braswell, I believe, picks up the foul there. Indeed. And Royce goes one on one from the line. 
3-2 Lightning early. Big Low with some uh, very electric uh, sneakers down there. <laughs> very flashy appearance there. Some purple, neon green, and pink all in one, two shoes. That's Beatty pretty impressive. He drinks about the three ball, but he drives the lane for an easy two. The Lightning get caught sleeping on defense there. Aaron Jr. over to Williamson. Williamson drives. Bolden in the corner. Three ball just a little bit short. Johnson tries with the finish, though. No good. Story. He'll take a three, deep three. No good. White collects the rebound there. He'll feed Kyle Johnson deep. Johnson drives to the rim, and another two and one for the Lightning. Beautiful play there from Kyle Johnson. The London Lightning have always been so good in transition. That time it showed through right there. And Kyle Johnson, a guy who uh, was away from the team for a bit, uh, helping Great Britain in Olympic qualifying. So, you know, London didn't play a ton in the past month. They were on the road for most of that time, but Johnson, uh, got a little bit more rest than the other guys. Might have a little more pop in his step. So Johnson misses his free throw, though. Big dimension, this is the Lightning's first home game in pretty much a month there. An eight-game road trip. Took them all over Ontario and out east. Uh, they come back about uh, not as bad as they started. Four and four out there on the road. Uh, some tough losses out east and uh, another big loss to Windsor, but they did finally get one back from the Express. And you know, it's hard to go eight games on the road almost an entire month. And you know that with that time span and the way things were split up between uh, game to game, that you're ending up coming back and then going out again and then coming back. And that can wear on a team. And I think it did catch London a little off guards there. And Beatty just a straight drive to the rim, but he cannot finish the dunk. What a mistake there by the Highlanders. Mo Bolden in the inside, off the glass, no good. Braswell with the rebound. And a little bit of sloppy play to start the game. The delay might be affecting both these teams at the beginning here, Chris. Well, again, they had the three-minute warm-up after the delay, but that's hardly enough when you've been basically warming up all day leading up to the game. And Massey with the three, no good. Williamson with the rebound. He'll drive quickly over to Bolden. Thinks three. He'll drive the lane. And he loses control of the ball trying to feed Williamson. That's BD. No good. Grabs his own shot, though, and back in the basket. So some sloppy offensive and defensive play from both teams to start the game. Cape Breton with an early one-point advantage. Bolton thinks three. White will go interior. Little scoop and no oh, good man. there from Royce White. Very optimistic shot there from White. This is Massey Jr. Over to Braswell in the corner. Three ball no good. Kyle Johnson snags a rebound. Over to Bolden. Johnson controls his dribble over to White. White feeds Bolden, and uh, not a very good pass there from Royce White. Roswell, he'll go in for an easy two off the glass. And Herring Jr. visibly upset there on the floor for the Lightning. Inside to Williamson. He'll take it himself. Little jumper for two is good. Big Low controls the ball here for the Highlanders. He'll feed over to Malik Story, no good. Royce White with the rebound. Goes inside himself, off the glass, no good. And a real quick back and forth pace for both teams to start the game, Chris. Well, considering the, uh, <laughs> the fact that these teams are a little shorthanded, You'd think they'd want to kind of conserve themselves a bit, but not today. Kyle Johnson, big three ball, no good. Herring Jr. snags the deep rebound. He'll go inside, and that'll be two points for Herring Jr. Love the awareness there from Doug Herring Jr. He really stood out on that road trip when London was struggling. He was really the guy there to try and get the team going. So Massey flips the ball back to Beattie. Three ball, not going yet for either team, really. Braswell with the optimistic steal attempt. He'll miss. Bolden with the three ball. No good. And we're going to have Malik Story pick up the foul here on Williamson trying to gather the rebound. So Herring Jr. to inbounds here. Quick substitution here. Capers coming into the game. Mo Bolden going to take a seat. So Herring Jr. over to Kyle Johnson. 
White controls the ball. Down low to Kyle Johnson. Great pass from Royce White. He has great vision down low. Kyle Johnson, we know him as a three-point shooter, but making some really smart cuts to the rim. It's a Massey. He'll make a move himself to the interior. <laughs> nice little floater off the glass there. 11 to 10, the Lightning lead. 6.20 left here in the first quarter. Capers back to White. He'll leave it for Kyle Johnson, who takes a three ball. And the first three. Keep feeding Kyle Johnson. Guys clearly feeling it at this point in the game. He got that feel for the rim, getting up close to the basket. Now he's stepping up beyond the line. He's a guy who can heat up quickly, too. You want to make sure you get on him. And so... Six minutes, well, just under six minutes remaining here in the first quarter. London Lightning 14, Cape Breton Highlanders 10. We'll take you to a quick media timeout with Knox from TV. All right, we return from the media timeout. Brennan Jamison on play-by-play -play here with my friend Chris Croucher on the color. Chris, uh, a frenetic first start to uh, the first quarter for both teams. Kyle Johnson jumps out as a, a hot man to start the game for the Lightning. Well, Kyle Johnson, a guy who's got a 50-point name on, or game on his resume, a guy who can really fill the bucket, and he's been doing that here tonight. Kind of an interesting battle for the tempo so far in this game. Williamson finds a quick two off the glass out of the timeout. Big low, flips over to Massey. Massey down to Beatty. Beatty, and not a very pretty two-point shot there off the rim from Beatty. Royce White, long pass down the court, off the glass and two points for the Lightning. The mitts on Royce White to get his hand on that ball. What a great catch. Guy's got a future wide out. Massey controlling the ball, trying to take his way to the inside. Williamson playing some very tough D on him. That'll go out off of his hands. Highlanders will have the ball, 12 seconds to shoot. You know, I think there's one telling staff for Cape Breton right now, 0 of 7 from three-point land. You make one of those and you're very much in this game. So Massey, he goes in off the glass after collecting a couple of his own rebounds. Because, I mean, London already had three early turnovers, so there's a bunch of extra possessions there to be taken by Cape Breton. But unfortunately, they didn't turn any of those into points, really. Williamson feeds Capers on the interior. Kyle Johnson from three. No good. Short off the glass. Williamson's going to grab that rebound. And uh, we're going to get a whistle here. Looks like maybe Kyle Johnson put a foot on the line. And that indeed is what it is. So Tydron Beatty to inbounds there to Big Low. Got Big Low feeding Malik Story. And I think that's going to be a foul on Doug Herring Jr. I'm not sh quite sure for what, though. Looks like an elbow there. Pardon me, that's going to be on Capers. 
Kyle Johnson going to check out of the game, though. Ashton Smith in to replace him. Uh, we should mention, just uh, just before that media timeout, it looked like Malik Story from the Highlanders collected a technical foul, arguing with the referees about a call. And Royce oh, Wyatt goes oh, end man. to end and collects a foul. A big storyline we'll see in this game is uh, the Highlanders and the Lightning, one and two in uh, free throw attempts per game. So we should expect to see both teams from the line frequently here. You know, it makes sense when you think of the lineups these guys have. I mean, Tydron Beatty, uh, a guy who can be physical down low. Uh, Garrett Williamson on the Lightning, always been able to get to the free throw line at a just a ridiculous clip. So both teams able to play that that gritty style, but also able to run out and run up and down the floor. Pardon me. Tydron Beatty with a block by Ashton Smith. Royce White fakes the pass to Herring Jr., throws it up, no good, collects his own rebound in off the glass. And Royce White is just causing a ton of trouble down low for the Highlanders so far in this quarter. Beatty flips to Broswell. Broswell with the three ball and off the glass. <laughs> Did he call back? I don't Did know he if call he called bank? it. We might have to shave a point off there. <laughs> That's only a two and a half point shot then, right? Uh, so we got a 23-15 lightning lead. Three and a half left in the opening frame. Herring Jr. three ball, no good. Story collects the rebound. He's going to feed Massey in the corner. He drives the rim. No good. Collects his own rebound. And Massey drops another two. The Highlanders doing great off their own offensive glass, giving themselves second and third chances so far. Herring Jr. Nice. Draws good a sweep through. Good draws sweep a foul through right there. Massey there, yes. Just a smart play, defender getting a little eager for the steal, just sweep right through, take that foul call and take your shots. I love that play. So Herring Jr. is going to go to the line. But again, Cape Breton very much leading the turnover battle, but they're only shooting 34% compared to almost 50% for the London Lightning. So if you're going to get those extra opportunities, and that takes good instincts, good playmaking, skills they've shown in this one, but they haven't been able to turn that into points, and that's something they got to look at. Herring Jr. goes two for two. Should add, I don't think we've ever once called them capers. We'd be referring to Marcus Capers. I saw that comment. <laughs> And that's uh, Tydron Beatty going to the rim. Both teams having success getting under the basket early in the quarter. Royce White sets up his own three ball, no good. He can be kind of sneaky with that shot, but it isn't the most consistent one. And that's Massey Ooh. from the three. He steps up, makes it a three point game. Herring Jr. tries to drive, loses control of the ball, needs some help. That's Williamson. Feeds Ashton Smith. Smith, three, no good. White with the rebound. Pushes over to Williamson. Oh, <laughs> luckily collects the ball. No good. White with the finish, though. A crazy set sequence of plays there. That could have been too easy the other way had Massey managed to collect that Williamson uh, pass. That would have been another turnover for the London Lightning. Again, they got to just take a little bit better care of the ball, and they could be uh, leading by a wider margin, really. They just have to make sure they aren't losing possession. So Kyle Johnson, he'll check back in. And Yoani D'Alembert back in the game, or sorry, in, in the game for the first time for the Lightning. That's Broswell with the quick three. No good. Massey collects the rebound. Broswell and Herring Jr. getting very handsy over on the side of the court there. Massey driving. He'll go to the rim. No good. Story with the three. No good either. D'Alembert with the rebound. Funny. I think Beattie had the better shot. Capers underneath the rim to Kyle Johnson. Oh, I love that pass. What a finish by Kyle Johnson and a beautiful pass. Again, Marcus Capers, not a guy who's going to fill the stat sheet, but just does so many things well for the London Lightning. Big low. Over to Massey. Massey. 
Takes a deep two, off balance, but finds its way. Capers moving quickly up court for the Lightning. Down low to Doug Herring Jr. Herring Jr. backing him up, and no good. We will get a foul call here. And I like that. Doug Herring Jr. as a point guard, one of the bigger actual point guards in this league, often finds himself in size mismatches, and I like the way he's able, even though he's a point guard, you don't really think of them being the guys to back a guy down in the post, but I love when Doug Herring Jr. takes advantage of that size matchup because he often has a mismatch when he goes down low. So Herring Jr. takes the foul. He'll get two more from the charity stripe. Just over a minute after these free throws to play in the first quarter. She mentioned the Highlanders have six fouls, which means they've only got one more to give. Antonio Bigelow, he'll move the ball across the timeline. Passes over to Story. Story drives inside. Floater no good. Collects his own rebound, though. D'Alembert giving him some... Big time troubles underneath, but he'll finally pick up the foul and send Story to the free throw line. Yeah, Dallenberg did everything he could on that one, but I mean, if a guy's gonna go with the ball that many times, eventually there's gonna be a foul. Great hustle by Story though, being able to collect that rebound continuously, uh, <laughs> pushing himself closer to a double-double almost single-handedly on that play. So Story goes two for two from the free throw. Ashton Smith pushing the ball up the court for the Lightning. Over to Doug Herring Jr. Directing some traffic here, Kyle Johnson. Back to Herring Jr. Five seconds left to shoot here for the Lightning. Herring Jr. just from inside the free throw line takes a two. So big low, shot clock's off here, under 15 seconds. Big low, letting some time bleed here. Don't wanna let too much time bleed though. He's gonna keep going, he gets stuck up. Herring Jr., no, no good there. Great turnover from the Lightning. They'll go into the second quarter with a 33-26 advantage. I'm Brendan with Chris Croucher. We'll see you in the second quarter for the Knox from TV Gamecast.
right, folks, welcome back to the second quarter. Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. Brennan Jameson here with Chris Coucher. The Highlanders control the ball. Antonio Biglow down low to Beattie. Beattie takes it two of his own. Little floater goes in for two. I love recognition there, Beattie, knowing he has the smaller Ashton Smith. Just kind of gives a little push, get off of me, and then takes a shot. Love that. Ashton Smith moving some bodies around. Over to Kyle Johnson, takes the three ball. No good, little too strong. That's Biglow with the ball. And that is number six on the Highlanders. That'd be Rick Bodiford right there. Rick Bodiford. <laughs> Bodiford, NBL vet. Interesting fact about Cape Breton, they got two guys who have played for the Laval Kebs. If you can believe that. Ashton Smith takes a quick floater. Really athletic move there from Smith for two. Laval, uh, during the very first year of NBL Canada, 2011-12, and they've got two guys still in NBL uh, playing on this Cape Breton team. Beattie drives, no good. Dallenbear collects the ball. Dixon Green on the end of his pass. Capers pushes to Johnson in the corner. Three ball, a little too short. And that's going to go off Kyle Johnson's hand out of bounds. So a turnover there for the Highlanders. So big low. Across the timeline. Flips back to Beattie. Beattie drives, little floater, no good. Johnson grabs the rebound. Smith over to Johnson. Johnson deep two ball, no good. Bodiford with the rebound. Bodiford driving the entirety of the lane. Dixon Green gets a hand on his shot. That'll go out of bounds off of him. Had to hurdle some chairs there too. Had a little bit more momentum than I think he even thought he had. Seen that a lot lately here at the Bud. Really paying for those courtside seats, getting right in the action. <laughs> Quick substitutions for the Lightning. Royce White and Mo Bolden checking back into the game. Massey, he'll take a deep three ball. No good, too short off the glass. And that's going to go out off the hands of uh, Jamal Reynolds, number nine for the Highlanders. You know, I think I'd like to see a little bit more movement from the Highlanders. We're seeing a lot of one pass, two pass shot. You know, I think I'd like them to kind of take their time a bit, get everyone on the offense working. Royce White, bad exchange there with Kyle Johnson, manages to collect it. Down low to White, White over to Smith, not quite expecting that pass, but he does get his hands off it. Great move to the rim by Ashton Smith though. Massey, over to Broswell. Reynolds, he'll make a move at the basket. No good, too strong off the glass. Deep pass, intercepted by Reynolds. Or sorry, that's Bodiford. Kyle Johnson was the intended target. And Ashton Smith's gonna take a tough foul there on Jamal Reynolds. Both teams really pushing the pace again early in the quarters. We know uh, the Highlanders like to play with a short bench and the Lightning playing with a short bench, whether they like, like it or not. Four uh, players out. <laughs> maybe uh, both teams. Uh, Even the coaching staff test, missing a yeah. guy. <laughs> you know, possibly uh, maybe both teams uh, testing uh, both teams' endurance, trying to get them tired. It's interesting, too, because I think London wanted to keep a fast tempo despite the fact that they're down, guys, whereas I think Cape Breton wanted to slow down a little bit in the early going here. They've kind of been battling for control of tempo. We're starting to see the first stretch where London's really controlling the flow of the game just now. Royce White backs off Gianti. Over to Dixon Green. Dixon Green for three, too strong. Royce White, after that first quarter, very close to flirting with a triple-double. Already 12 points and seven rebounds. Massey drives, little floater for two. I think you gotta keep feeding Mass. And He's that's been just the only been his go-to, yeah. He's been the only guy consistently making shots for this Highlander team. So Ashton Smith control the ball for the Lightning. Royce White tries to feed uh, Kyle Johnson going to the bucket. Smith down low to Johnson. 
great reverse lay-in off the glass there. Botterford with the ball, deep three, and that's going to find its way. Mo Bolton moving quickly down the court, loses control, out off Highlander hands. They'll argue the case, but I don't think they're going to win it. Williamson will check into the game. Martin Dixon Green will take a seat on the bench. Royce White takes the inbounds. Cross court to Johnson. Johnson for three, no good. A little unusual, that one didn't really have any chance there. Don't really see that kind of a miss from Johnson much. Massey, two from the corner, no good. Bolden collects a rebound. Williamson down the court with speed. He'll drive the lane himself. Bodiford's gonna pick up the foul. Williamson will go to the line for two. So the Lightning, uh, despite a so-so road trip going uh, four and four, uh, they keep pace, Saint, uh, the St. John edge. Uh, don't manage to take any ground. In fact, they're a half game behind, having played one more game than the Lightning. And that's gonna be an interesting one for London too, because sitting there in, uh, sitting there's the Windsor Express, right? And for the London Lightning, they haven't really been able to get many wins against Windsor. So if they have to face the Express in the first round, that's gonna be a real struggle for the London Lightning. So really that positioning between the Lightning and the edge could be a very big difference heading into the playoff race. So Williamson goes two for two there. Massey moving the ball slowly down court for the Highlanders. Over to Bodiford. Bodiford drives the lane. He'll go in tough. They're going to give him the and one. Yes, they are. I think both refs were uh, kind of waiting for the other one to make a call and see yeah, if it's going to be a blocker charge. Yeah, we had some hands in the air. We had some <laughs> whistles blown. and You could count the seconds between whistle and actual call there. <laughs> both, both teams were kind of holding their breath, waiting to see what was going on there. I love the drama. <laughs> a very tightly contested game so far here, folks. The Lightning with a three-point lead over the Cape Breton Highlanders. 7.30 left in the second quarter. Botterford can't finish the three-point play, though. Got to make your free throws, kids. Williamson, oh, Ooh. a dangerous pass to Herring Jr. Massey yep. read that extremely well. And I was going to say, that's Massey again. He's been an opportunist tonight. He's doing a great job getting in front of passes. Got to keep an eye out for him because he's a lot quicker than you think and able to jump those passes. So White. There it and, is again. Uh, oh, my goodness. Ooh. That was Reynolds running into a brick wall that is Royce White, and that might have thrown him off. He just loses the handle on the ball and gives it right back to the Lightning. That's one of those hits where you get up looking for the license plate number on the truck. Jeez. Yeah, White not even in motion. Reynolds just didn't have his head on a swivel there, and White just, he is a large man, folks. Ooh. And a, what a block by Macy. Williamson not expecting the help there. So Herring Jr. over to White. He's going to almost lose it to Macy. And Royce White will take in two on his own. Bodiford controlling his dribble. Inside to Macy. And that has just been bread and butter for the Highlanders. Getting into that kind of, you know, four or five feet from the basket and letting it float in. Bolden with the three ball. No good. And... Both teams struggling from the three-point line so far, Chris. And what a finish there, <laughs> Bodiford to Reynolds. Here's Cape Breton. You know, London's been the team trying to push the pace. Cape right, Breton here saying, hey, we can do that too. Some nice plays there from the Highlanders. So Herring Jr., he'll take a three. From the baseline, Herring Jr., a much-needed basket from the Lightning to push the lead back a little bit from the Highlanders. And again, he's been so steady for this Lightning team, having that, that steady presence at point guard. And Botterford <laughs> like that. drops a deep two. But having a guy like Doug Herring Jr. as your point guard, Coach Rob Spawn of the Cape Breton Highlanders knows all about that. He had Herring Jr. in St. John with the Mill Rats. And Botterford pokes the ball away from White. Reynolds pushing tempo down the court. 
And that's a one-point lead for the Highlanders now, folks. Just under six minutes left here in the second quarter. Williamson driving the inside. Broswell playing some tight D. Mo Bolden with the finish. Great movement there from the Lightning on offense. Broswell taken away under the rim there, and Mo Bolden comes in for the finish. Bodiford over to Broswell, back to Bodiford. He'll take a three over Williamson, no good. Bolden collects a rebound. Again, that time on offense, only two guys touching the ball. Got to move the rock. Herring Jr. forcing Macy back over to Kyle Johnson. And then he'll take the foul on the way in there. We'll take a quick medium timeout. We'll join you on the other side with our Knox from TV Gamecast. Back on the other side of the timeout, Brennan Jamison with Chris Croucher. The London Lightning holding a very narrow edge, 47-46 over the Cape Breton Highlanders. And uh, Chris, the Highlanders pushing pace, keeping up with this Lightning offense. Yeah, and I think uh, London and, and Cape Breton, they've been in a battle for tempo pretty much the whole game. I think that's the first time we really saw Cape Breton start to come into their own with that kind of get a feel for the game and a lot of it started right there with Bruce Massey and also having Rick Bodiford running the point I think made a difference in terms of getting that offense running properly so we're Mo starting to see a little bit more ball movement Mo Bolton collects a two out of the break and then also the rebound great feed behind his back to find white Williamson moving oh, quickly down the court <laughs> what a finish that could have gone terrible in about three or four ways and Williamson made the one good thing happen that was an impressive play there. Both Mo Bolden keep the ball in bounds on the one end, and Williamson, I don't know how he got through there. Great play. Massey backs up Kyle Johnson. He'll take a deep two. And that's just the man you want the ball in his hands right now for the Highlanders. So, Herring Jr. Moves across the timeline. Over to Kyle Johnson. I think we're going to see an offensive foul there on Doug Herring Jr. So that'll be a turnover for the Lightning. That's the second foul of that nature on Doug Herring Jr. Again, he's a physical player, and I think that time the physical side just got the better of him. So Story inbounds to Bodiford. Bodiford over to Massey. Thinks about the shot from the free throw line. Beattie's gonna drive. He'll go in off the glass for an easy two. Mm -hmm. 
Bolden. Pushes. And that'll go off the leg. World Cup of, coming up. Of BD. <laughs> So Williamson will take it from the side. 14 seconds to shoot. I should say, I was mentioning Rick Bodford was really doing a better job running the offense, shooting at Cape Breton all the way up to 44% now. Mo Bolden, deep three, no good. Yeah, and the Highlanders were flirting with 30 most of the first quarter, and they've been able to up that shooting percentage, a lot of it due to Bruce Massey. Bodford over to Beatty. Beatty runs into his own guy off the shot. Williamson down the floor. Big oh. finish from Williamson. He wants the call there on BD coming back. He will not get it. But an emphatic finish there from Garrett Williamson. Bodiford moves Massey over to Story. Story takes a three. Ooh. Tough shot. Tough shot right over Marcus Capers. And we've got a tie game here, folks. Two and a half left to play in the half. Bolden drives. Two over top of Story. Massey down low to Bodiford. Feeds Massey on the great give and go. No good, though. That's going to be a foul. Massey's going to shoot two. So Massey here for two. Two for two for Bruce Massey. He is uh, filling up that score column so far in the game for the Highlanders. Well, the free throws give him 20 on the night already in half of a game. Williamson over to Bolden. Bolden will take the two. No good. Massey with the rebound. Down under two minutes here in the game. Bodiford flips over to Massey. Massey drives. No good. Capers giving him some trouble. Bolden over to Herring Jr. He's got to watch out for help there. Massey strips the ball away from him coming back late. Beatty driving. And that's going to be a charge 100%, folks. Great veteran play there by Garrett Williamson. Saving some points and just a heads up play. He could recognize there the adrenaline of the game getting up a bit. BD got caught into it, was going right to the rim, really excited about those buckets, and Williamson able to just get in the way. Should point out the Lightning already have four players in double digit scoring tonight. Royce White makes a spin pass. And that is a great finish by Royce White. Bodiford down to Janty. Janty up to Massey. Massey steps back for a three. No good off the glass. Williamson with the rebound. Down under a minute. Williamson pushing into Bolden, who finishes. Beautiful finish there. And we'll get a Highlanders timeout here. You know, I like that timeout too by the Highlanders. I know there's only 50 seconds left in the gate in the half, pardon me. I, I know it might seem like, why would you do it now when the half's almost here? You don't want to give London any momentum at any point in this game. London getting on a bit of a run there. The crowd was getting into it a bit. I like that call. Get a timeout. Make things quiet going into the half instead of London going in with all the energy and momentum. And uh, we had a brief talk with our stats guy just before the game today. We know the type of noise that London can make in the third quarter of a game. They are phenomenal at halftime adjustments, and giving them any momentum going into that half is just going to hurt you. Well, we have Bill Ovens up here who does an awesome job providing stats for our broadcast team here. Uh, we always appreciate what Bill can bring us, and one of the things Bill brought 
uh, was bringing up the fact that London is basically destroying teams in the third quarter, which is interesting because back in the day, because I, I remember my first year covering this team, I remember every year I've been doing it, it always seemed like the third was their Achilles. They've really figured out that third quarter. It's been their strength. So you don't want London going in with momentum, going into what has been their strongest quarter all year. You want to make sure things get quiet, get the fans out of the game a bit, see if you can make some plays here, and go in with the momentum on Cape Breton side. All right, so we will come back to Cape Breton's ball. Should add Royce White, only one rebound away from a first half double-double. 16 points, nine rebounds right now, including six assists on top of that. Then Bruce Massey, of course, leading the way for the Cape Breton Highlanders. I, I spoke incorrectly before, 19 points for Massey, six rebounds, three assists. So Massey will control the ball here. Feeds over to Malik Story. Story, down low to Janty. Over to Bodiford. Bodiford for three. No good. Too strong off Royce White's head. Well, the World Cup is coming up. <laughs> Not sure what the call on the floor here is. Looks like a offensive or sorry, defensive foul here. I think it might have been the clock didn't start. Yeah, shot clock was incorrect. So seven seconds to shoot here. Story with the three ball. Definitely have more time than that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's Massey running into the cameraman down there. Occupational hazard, unfortunately. He's got knee pads. He's, he was ready. That will be a turnover on the Highlanders, though. Lightning control the ball down under 30 seconds. Marcus Capers over to Williamson. Williamson to Bolden. Back to Capers. Royce White wants that ball in his hands. He's going to back up Janty. And he's going to get the floater. No good over him. No shot clock down under 10 seconds. Massey Jr., we know who Highlanders want the ball to be in, hands to be in. And he's going to lose control of it, though. And he's not going to get a shot off. A little bit of sloppy play there to end the quarter for both teams. But we'll go into the half with the hometown London Lightning leading the visiting Cape Breton Highlanders 59-55. to Brendan Jamison here with Chris Croucher. We will see you on the other side of the half.
Welcome back to the broadcast, folks. Brendan Jameson here with Chris Croucher in London, Ontario at Budweiser Gardens. The London Lightning lead the Cape Breton Highlanders 59-55. to And uh, the Highlanders, Chris, have really matched pace with the Lightning in that first half. Yeah, and I was a little worried this might happen for the London Lightning because you've got a team that's in the playoffs already. They're looking ahead in, the, in their schedule to the playoffs. Cape Breton hasn't, is at the bottom of the, of the Atlantic. You know, I think they got caught a little and got caught on their heels with the way the Cape Breton Highlanders were able to play at the start of the game. And especially in the back half of that second quarter, we started to see some really good consistent offense coming from the Cape Breton Highlanders. And I think that made a very big difference for them. They had a guy like Rick Bodiford running the point efficiently. Bruce Massey was making some big shots. And if they can come out like that, they're gonna be awesome. Gonna take a look at the out of town scores. Out east, we have a final score, Halifax Hurricanes 101, Moncton Magic 86. And then of course here, 59-55 for the London Lightning. Brendan, take it away. All right, so the Lightning control the ball to start the second half. Royce White, quick two off the glass. And the Lightning extend their lead early. That's Big Low back into the game. And the Highlanders, as we know, very conservative with their substitutions. It seems like uh, every man's playing 12 minutes, if not 24 minutes. Very little time off for them. Again, London very short-handed now, missing four players from their regular lineup and their head coach. Herring Jr. almost loses the ball trying to move some players around. Herring Jr. over to Royce White. Roswell over commits. Massey in for the help, but Royce White doesn't come up with the shot. That's Beatty with the ball. Beatty cross court to Massey. Massey steps in, little floater, no good. Broswell with the rebound. Two for the Highlanders. And, uh, not sure what the whistle is for there. Looks like no harm, no foul there. We're back underway. Might have been a warning there. I think it was a warning to Rob's. I, I'm not certain because we didn't hear that there, but I believe it was uh, Rob Spawn just a little too far onto the court maybe. Williamson stepping to the interior. He'll throw a floater up off the glass. No good. Crosswell collects the ball. Massey pushing it back. Kyle Johnson tight on him. Beatty, he'll take a two from the free throw. No good, too strong. Herring Jr. grabs the rebound. Williamson up court quickly. He'll pull one off the glass and he's gonna take the foul there. So the foul call will go towards Massey. Williamson completes his first. Two for two for Garrett Williamson. Big low pushing the ball. Over to Malik Story. Story inside to Massey. And Royce White's going to pick up the foul there on Massey, trying to cut to the rim. And uh, a little bit of something worth mentioning in the Halifax Moncton game. Al Stewart of the uh, Moncton Magic, his uh, second player in NBL history to 1,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 1,000 assists, Chris. Yeah, he's actually teammates with the first guy to do it, Anthony Anderson. But Al Stewart, a guy who's been around in this league for a very long time, he's had a stop in with the London Lightning as well. Uh, very long career here, to uh, Defensive Player of the Year as well. Uh, just an all-around uh, one of the one of the the faces, I would say, of the NBL if you look at it from time spent perspective. So Massey goes two for two from the line. So the ref, yeah, we, we are definitely getting some warnings here for both teams. The ref calling for no more. That's between Royce White and Bruce Massey by the looks of it. And they gave each other daps, so I don't think there's anything like hostile about that. But the ref's definitely trying to make sure this game's under control. I think they're going to go give coach an explanation there.
<laughs> Rob Spawn might be the angriest one. Massey's talking to the ref again too. Massey, Massey looks like it's a it's a diffusing thing. Yeah, he looks like he's trying to let his coach know that that's there's nothing wrong. So Herring Jr. He'll move the ball here, and he f oh, oh my goodness, the top was gonna blow off this place if Mo Bolton could have finished that. Herring Jr. Unfortunately, a little too lazy on the pass. Broswell the other way with two for the Highlanders. Williamson. Leaves it for Royce White. Behind the back to Williamson. He'll go inside. Broswell's going to collect the foul here. Foul to the Highlanders, number 32, Chris Braswell. That's his third in the team's second. So Williamson doing what he does best, attacking that rim and collecting fouls. You know, Williamson, a guy who's so good at getting to the line. He had a game back in the 2013-14 season where he shot 20 free throws. A uh, guy who's able to adjust for contact, make the shot, and then make the free throw after, too. So Williamson again, two for two from the line. Big Low pushes the ball down court. He's going to set it over to Beatty. Back to Massey. Massey drives the rim, and he'll get past Kyle Johnson for two. And Bruce Massey has just been unstoppable so far in this game for the Highlanders. One-man offense for Cape Breton, and I mean, considering how short-handed they are, he might play the rest of the game the way he's been shooting. Williamson driving inside, off the glass. Off balance, and Williamson with the finish. Both teams have struggled shooting the three today, but no problem getting points on the interior. Massey again driving the lane. And Broswell with the steal, but he'll lose control of the ball. Fortunate for the London Lightning there. Williamson a little lazy on his pass, not quite thinking Broswell was going to step back and get a hand in there. You know, we've seen the pace come to a crawl here in this third quarter, considering where it was at the end of the second. And I think this kind of suits Cape Breton, taking their time and settling things down. So Doug Herring Jr. over to Bolden. Back over to Doug Herring Jr. Herring Jr. over to Kyle Johnson. Johnson's going to take a three, and he needed that. He was going a little cold for a bit, but we know Kyle Johnson, he's not afraid to take as many threes as it's going to take to get him hot. Massey. Down I like low. this matchup if Beattie takes advantage yeah, here. Yeah, Tydron Beattie backing Williamson up. Williamson with some great hand strength blocking the shot and out of bounds off Beatty, lightning ball. You know, I like that matchup for Beatty, but Williamson just stood tr just stood tall there. Excellent job defensively to force that turnover. The Highlanders are really pushing the Lightning on these inbound passes, giving them a tough time. That's the second time in a row that the Lightning have struggled to inbounds the ball properly. Williamson once again driving lane, white down low, baseline. And he's going to get the finish there and one. Strong move by White, forcing the foul by the Highlanders. And yeah, I don't think there's anyone on Cape Breton who's really able to cover White the way you want to. He's just been uh, a force down low for the London Lightning. So White with the free throw here to complete the three-point play. It really is one of the big advantages London really always has is White is probably the biggest mismatch in NBL Canada. There isn't really anyone who matches him perfectly. You can do good team defense, and you can have a guy make a couple good plays, but for the most part, he tends to run wild. So that's Tydron Beatty with the deep two. Herring Jr. pushing up to Williamson. Williamson driving inside off the glass and in. And Williamson has been a one-man wrecking crew so far in this third quarter. I think London's going to start making a point of pushing the play, too. Big low with the two from the free throw line. And yet, we are bouncing back and forth quickly here, folks. Herring Jr. pushing the ball inside. Outside to Kyle Johnson for three. No good. That rims out. Story. He'll take a three. No good. Royce White with the rebound. And with that rebound, that should give the double-double for Royce White. Herring Jr. for three. No good. Big low. The diminutive Anto Antonio Big low. Grabs the rebound, oh. feeds a great pass there to Broswell. Beautiful bounce pass right there. So 
So and now what? London's slowing it down a bit. They're controlling the tempo right now, and that's a big advantage for a team offensively. You get to go your own flow. So Royce White tries to feed Williamson going to the basket. Hands up there for the Highlanders, though. Malik Story over to Tydron Beatty. Beatty spins off Bolden. Two-pointer no good. White with another rebound. Pushes the pace, but once again, another pickoff pass. And uh, Royce White forced to foul Chris Broswell. And the Lightning have been doing a couple of good things in this third quarter. Passing seems to be a struggle here, though. The, the Highlanders have a read on them. Well, London, 10 turnovers in this game is just uh, not really an acceptable number when you look at the score. It's only a four-point game, but London could be up 10 if you just don't give Cape Breton all these extra opportunities that they're handing to them. And the other way around, if the Highlanders had converted on some of those early first half turnovers, they might be holding the lead themselves. And that was a big problem in the first half that they weren't able to turn those turnovers into points. And London uh, now starting to get a little bit more comfortable. But Malik's story, great shot there. Cape Breton not going away. Well, Herring Jr. gets big low off of him. Moving the offense down the floor here for the Lightning. Outside to Kyle Johnson. Johnson flips it back to Bolden. Keeps control of the ball. Five seconds to shoot here. Somebody needs to make a move. Williamson on the interior. And once again, Garrett Williamson down right under the basket finds another two points. You can even see that play unfolding. Almost everyone on the Lightning, when the shot clock gets that low, looking Williamson's way, eventually Royce White finds the passing lane to get it to him. Bodiford with the ball here, trying to make a move past Caring Jr. He'll step in for two, no good. Kyle Johnson collects the rebound, feeds Mo Bolden deep. Bolden finishing off the glass. And the Lightning finding a lot of success with moving that ball quickly down court. Roswell trying to push Royce White inside. Botterford with the three, and that's going to cut the lead down to three here. 79-76, down under five minutes. And that's that steady veteran presence a guy like Rick Botterford can bring. He's played in this league before, five years in NBL Canada. He knows what he's doing. He understands how players in this league like to play. White pushing to the inside, finishes that for two. And Broswell having a tough time keeping up with Royce White down low. Again, he's a walking mismatch anytime White goes down the floor. And the ball pinballs off a couple hands, maybe a face or two there. The Lightning come up with it. Herring Jr. pushing it. And Williamson tries for the finish. No good. Big low. He'll move quickly down the floor here. Broswell off the glass. Two points there for the Highlanders. And I didn't like the decision to go at the rim there. It was it, They didn't have numbers. I would have liked that ball to come out. And Big Royce play. White drops a beautiful finish there. And I believe we're going to get a Highlanders timeout here. So we'll step away quickly. On the other side, we'll see you with the Knoxstrom TV Gamecast.
right, so back from the Highlanders' timeout. 83-78, the Lightning hold the third quarter advantage over the visiting Highlanders. Chris, tempo is a word we used a lot this game. The Lightning have kept it up, but the Highlanders have had answers seemingly at every corner. But it is a little concerning, however. Highlanders able to answer, but they haven't been able to grab the control of that tempo the way London's been able to slow it down, speed it up. And that's what keeps your offense on balance. It's what keeps it on guard. So you're kind of playing a little bit from behind when you don't have control of that tempo. So Malik Story goes in, little floater, little backspin on there, won't go. Ashton Smith collects the rebound. And he's gonna push the inside. And we're gonna get a Highlanders foul here. That's gonna be Botterford. So that's a foul on the floor, so Ashton Smith to rebound. Capers. Down low to Williamson. He's going to back Big Low up, and he's going to finish off the glass. And that's a mismatch there with the uh, smaller Big Low on Williamson. And good job by Williamson to recognize that and take advantage. Story feeds Botterford over to Big Low to Bruce Massey. Trying to make a move past Ashton Smith. He'll drive the interior. And he's going to get a foul here. That'll be Ashton Smith, so Bruce Massey will go to the line. Shoot two here. That's Jamal Reynolds, number nine, coming on the floor. Antonio Biglow is going to have a seat on the bench. And Chris, I don't know if Bruce Massey has had a break yet this game. <laughs> I think he... Briefly was on the bench in the second quarter. For the most part, though, it's been Bruce Massey uh, doing a lot of the heavy lifting when he is on the court. So Massey finishes his first free throw. And he'll go two for two. That's uh, 28 in the game so far for Bruce Massey Jr. That's 25 as well for Royce White, the leader for the Lightning so far this game. And he'll collect another two there, a little floater off the rim, off the glass, and in. Again, just so hard to match up with. I, d I don't know if there are a lot of guys in this league that can do it. So Story with the dribble. And Marcus Capers with the big block. He, uh, he knows who they want to feed it to. He read that pass from Story perfectly. So D'Alembert, he's going to jump on the court for Royce White. I think this is just some foul management. Royce White sitting at three in the game. So Bruce Massey controlling the ball. Down under five seconds. Massey's going to take the two. Capers with the block, though. Massey collects the rebound. No good, though. That'll be a shot clock violation. Great job by the Lightning there to force a shot that Massey really didn't have a great chance on. Smith to D'Alembert. Smith. Oh, and he wanted that finish, and Mo Bolden was there, but unfortunately a foul on the floor. Sorry, that's not on the floor. We'll say no shot, but it looks like Ashton Smith's going to shoot two here. What? <laughs> I, I believe it was a pass. I don't, I, I don't think he'd be going the line. I think that's what the refs are saying here. Because, I mean, can it be called a shooting foul when it was very clearly a pass? I know it's heading towards the rim, but... <laughs> No, it looks like they have yet. They've changed their mind here, so they will inbounds. And that's the right call and something you like to see from the refs. Get together, talk about it, make sure the call's the right one. It's really what we're seeing in uh, most leagues these days is they, they don't want one official controlling the game. Let's get together, let's talk about the call because, you know, you've got two or three guys doing it, seeing it from two or three different angles, so why not to get together and, you know, there's make three, the right call? There's three sets of eyes. Use them all, you know? And these, I mean, they have a tough enough time as it is. Yeah. Why not get together and make it easier on yourselves? 
So that's Botterford in off the glass. No good. Bolden with the rebound. Feeding Williamson quickly down court. Behind the back. Finish for Capers. And he dots the eye on the exclamation. My goodness. Some great teamwork there from Williamson and Capers. The behind the back pass and the finish. The Lightning have extended their lead to nine, 89 to 80. Minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Bruce Massey over to Botterford, corner three, and that's good. And Botterford's been coming up with those clutch three-pointers whenever things seem to be getting away from Cape Breton. Just steals back a bit of that momentum. So Williamson tries to feed Dallin so there. there. That's going to go off the foot of Story, but no call there from the rest. Behind the back to Reynolds, he'll finish off the glass for two. A quick five points the other way from the Highlanders have cut into that nine point lead for the Lightning. 89 85. Ashton Smith with a pass over to Bolden. He'll lose control of it. Off Bolden's foot. Turnover for the Lightning. Highlanders control the ball. Lightning fans, we just want to wish a very happy 10th birthday to Jaden up on the big screen right now. Happy birthday, Jaden. So the Lightning looked like they were pushing the lead and, and the tempo of the game in their favor, and the Highlanders come back with a couple turnovers and some big baskets. Botterford out to Story for three, and that's a good bucket. The Lightning looks like they're going to take their time here. Is this not the way you want to go into a fourth? Great play by the Cape Breton Highlanders. And we talked about them doing this heading into the half, and they were able to stifle that momentum. Here, they're doing the same thing. Capers cuts inside. Williamson goes in for the finish. Malik Story's going to pick up the foul, trying to prevent Williamson from moving into the interior. And this has been what Cape Breton's done so well in this game. Whenever there's a little bit of a run by the Lightning, they've been able to stifle it, get some points of their own. And just like that, the Cape Breton Highlanders within one. And it, it, this is the way you want to go into a fourth quarter with momentum kind of firmly in your corner. Williamson keeps up his torrent free throw pace. And that's two for two again for Garrett Williamson. So that's eight for eight in the game for him so far. Botterford pushing quickly down the court. Jamal Reynolds can't finish, but grabs his own rebound. And D'Alembert, he'll pick up the foul there. A little upset on the call. Technical there on D'Alembert. And yes, he does pick up the technical as well. Spiked the ball onto the court. Ref didn't like the reaction, and he's going to tee up. Yoani D'Alembert. I mean, of, of all the Lightning players, he's the one that's got a couple of texts to give before the suspension, so. Otherwise, you might be looking at someone joining Kirk Williams Jr. and uh, Ryan Anderson on the suspension list. So Jamal Reynolds, no good on his first shot. So one for two there for Jamal Reynolds. The Highlanders will maintain possession. Or sorry, no, Malik Story is going to step up and two, shoot two here. Yeah, there was originally the foul, and then there's going to be the technical shot too. Or unsporting. So you have the two for the original foul, and then one for the technical with Highlanders keeping possession. So the Highlanders, with four and a half seconds here to make a play, they could go into this fourth quarter with the lead. Something they haven't had since late in the second quarter. Malik Story throws up a three ball, no good. And so we'll go into the fourth quarter, the London Lightning leading the Cape Breton Highlanders 91 to 90. Brendan Jameson with Chris Croucher. We'll see you for the start of the fourth.
We're back with the final 12 minutes of this game between the Cape Breton Highlanders and the hometown London Lightning. The Lightning begin the frame with a narrow one-point lead. And that's going to be a ball off the foot of D'Alembert. So the Highlanders will hold on to possession. Jamal Reynolds, it's inbound to Rick Bodiford. Bodiford. Back to Story. Story with a catch and release three. Oh. And a huge arcing three goes in for Malik Story. From the B of Bud Gardens. That was impressive. Marcus Capers. Back to Ashton Smith. Smith over to Capers. He'll take a three from the top of the arc. No good. Johnson collects the rebound. Back to Capers. Trying to push his way inside. Kyle Johnson off the hands of Yoheni Dallenbeher. Tie game here, early minutes of the fourth quarter. Chris, these, these teams are, this is the only time all year they're going to see each other, barring uh, a really miraculous finish from the Highlanders to make the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, maybe perhaps the unfamiliarity with both teams playing a key in the closeness of this game. Oh, absolutely. Both teams, again, just now getting a feel for each other. Uh, a lot of, as we see that shot, not going to go. There's a lot of NBL veterans on the Cape Breton Highlanders who have played against these guys a lot, but there's also enough new faces, guys like Massey on the Highlanders, that London won't be as familiar with them as the Highlanders would be with London. And also with Rob Spawn, too. Again, he's coached against the Lightning for years now. They, they have an idea of what they're doing against the Lightning, whereas London, it's almost a foreign entity with the Highlanders. Botterford with the two, no good. The Highlanders will collect the rebound again, though. Beatty with the deep three, no good. That's Gianti with the rebound. And the Highlanders firmly in control of this ball here. Jamal Reynolds gonna drive, he loses control. Botterford on the floor. Possession arrow in London's favor if they call this a jump, which they are. Kyle Johnson uh, gingerly gets off the top of Rick Bodiford there. Well, it's a pretty smart play there by Kyle Johnson. He didn't actually need to steal the ball. He just had to sit on him until the possession arrow came into play. So Herring Jr. flips back to Ashton Smith. He'll push it across half court. Over to Marcus Capers. He'll activate his dribble over to Kyle Johnson. Royce White pushing Gianti back. He tries for two off the glass, no good. Bruce Massey pushing it down the court. He'll take a two from the corner, no good. Gianti comes in for the rebound. Story with the three ball, no good. Story with those huge arcing threes. Royce White feeds Herring Jr. He'll make a move from the top of the free throw line. A little couple bounces go in his favor. That's two for the Lightning. Tydron Beatty cuts in hard to the rim, runs over Marcus Capers on his way. No call from the ref. Bruce Massey, he'll take a floating two. No good. Just about everywhere but in there, Chris. Just about to touch every part of the rim. And we haven't really seen Bruce Massey miss all that much either tonight. Royce White sets Kyle Johnson up. No good. Couldn't finish on the great feed from Royce White. Massey feeds Bodiford. Bodiford will take a corner three. And that finds its way in. Beautiful. No rim at all. Barely even touched the net. And again, we've talked about Rick Bodiford. He has picked his moments perfectly. At any time Cape Brands need a bucky, he's been the one to step up. Royce White just pushing Gianti to the inside. And again, and that's another case where a guy knows he needs to step up and just be like, you know what? Enough of this. Time to go get some points. And that's what Royce White did there. He sees the score. He sees Cape Breton up one. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to go take the lead now. And I love that kind of the, uh, the decision making and the, the uh, prerogative there of Royce White to be able to get that bucket. So White takes the and one. 
98-96, the Lightning hold the lead. Eight and a half minutes left here in the final frame. Bruce Massey over to Bodiford. Tydron Beatty, he's gonna push it, little floater in for two. Capers over to Herring Jr. Herring Jr. looking to set some things up. He'll move around Capers, he'll take a deep three. No good. BG collects the rebound. Massey pushing the pace, he'll attack the interior. Little floater over Doug Herring Jr. and the Highlanders break 100 first. Look out, London, Cape Breton just not going away. You'd think with the shorter bench, we'd see it kind of taper off a bit here at the end, but both teams have that competitive drive going right now. So Royce White loses control of the ball, so the Lightning get a turnover, or, or have a turnover. Bodiford. Pushing across the timeline. Over to Massey. Activates his dribble. He's gonna take Capers to the inside. Little floater deep off the glass, no good. Massey collects the rebound though. Bodiford going tough inside, no. Not in time, not in time. No, they're gonna say he didn't get the shot off before the clock let out. And the refs are gonna talk about this? And they're gonna stick with the call. Yeah, looks like they'll hold on to the shot clock violation. That'd be a tough call to change, Chris. Uh, especially yeah. on the floor, they don't have uh, the gift of video replay, unfortunately, no. in this league. That. And to be honest, I think the right call was the shot clock violation, just from my eye. Uh, so I, I like the refs again talking about it, though, making sure they got the right call there. Royce White driving Gianti back into the rim, and he's gonna go to the line. He's just too strong. And, and Cordell Gianti's a, a, a pretty strong guy himself, but Royce White, just that next level strength there, able to just push him right under the rim. So White goes one of two. And you know, this fourth quarter, I think this is where you kind of see Royce White begin to take over a bit. I mentioned it earlier, but this is the point in the game where you go, okay, we're, we're down one. I We got to get stuff going. I think he's going to be the guy to kind of take the initiative. And some of those guys that we're used to seeing make their big shots, Ryan Anderson, uh, Joel Fries and Laddie, out of the game right now. A little too strong on the three ball there for Malik Story. Uh, really going to be up to Royce White and Garrett Williamson. Uh, the big score is this game for the Lightning to get them back in. And unfortunately, a turnover there. Story feeds Beatty. Williamson's going to pick up the foul on the way there. I believe they're going to say it was on the floor, not a shooting foul. Pardon me, it might be a shooting foul. Indeed, it is going to be shots for Tydron Beatty. You know, if you're London, you got to look at the score and be like, man, if we hadn't turned the ball over nine more times than the Highlanders, this would be a very different game. It's one of those things, they, it, it kind of sneaks up on you. You have a turnover here and there, and you go, oh, okay, whatever. But when you add it up to this much, it, it really is a, the difference between 10-point win and, and what we have right now. And all credit to Cape Breton, they started taking much better advantage of those turnovers in the second half while also making a bunch of shots of their own. So Tydron Beatty goes two for two. Highlanders stretch their lead out to three, 102 to 99. Herring Jr. Down to Royce White. White up to Herring Jr., back to White. White's gonna push it. Up to Herring Jr. over to Kyle Johnson. Herring Jr. with the open three. No good. Williamson with the rebound, though, beats the shot clock. And a great finish there by Garrett Williamson, getting that ball out of his hands quick to uh, make sure he doesn't lose that shot to the shot clock. And Williamson having himself a game 24 points, seven rebounds, five assists. 
Should also note Royce White, one assist away from a triple-double, continuing his lead as the most triple-doubles in NBL Canada history. So Malik Story tries to go to the rim. Garrett Williamson looked like a clean block. The fans don't like it. But Malik Story is going to go to the line here. And we are going to take a timeout before those free throw shots, so we'll see you on the other side of the break. Right back from the timeout, Malik Story. He will take a couple free throws for the Cape Breton Highlanders. And uh, one half of a quarter left in this game. The Lightning find themselves stuck a couple points, Chris. Uh, they haven't played the Christmas game in the world, but uh, they're still well in it, and they have a chance to get away from the Highlanders with a win. Well, again, up until three days ago, London had been on the road for almost a month. Uh, all that travel does add up and especially when you're missing four players. But here the Cape Breton Highlanders have had an excellent effort. I think Rick Bodiford and Bruce Massey have been really special. They're going to give a foul on Garrett Williamson here. So the Lightning, once again, another foul causing a turnover and just a chance for points down the drain. So Bodiford controls the ball, moves it across half court. Down to Beatty. Bolden not giving him much room. Tries to back him up. Floater from the free throw line, well short. Don't not think that's the one the coach was looking no, for. No, <laughs> not a quality opportunity there from Tydron Beatty. Herring Jr., Williamson driving baseline, back to Herring Jr., Royce White with the ball. He'll back Gianti up, no good. Cape Breton here, if they get a bucket, look out. Because the way they've been able to maintain momentum throughout the game has made them dangerous. If they can get a bucket here, get themselves a bit of a lead and keep that momentum, that's scary for them down the stretch here. Massey trying to push the interior over to Beatty. Feeds it back to Massey, Massey will flip around. Gianti, Herring Jr. is gonna pick up the foul on him. And the Lightning seemingly had played a somewhat clean game up until this point, picking up fouls at a quicker pace here. You know, it's actually surprising how low the foul numbers have been in this game considering how few guys are even hitting the floor in this one. Uh, you got Royce White, Garrett Williamson at three apiece, as well as Ashton Smith. Uh, and then for the Highlanders, Rick Bodiford at four, Tydron Beattie and Chris Braswell at three. Should also add that uh, four of the five starters for uh, the Cape Breton Highlanders, as well as uh, Rick Bodiford, uh, all in double digits, 15 plus points for all five of those guys. So Gianti goes two for two for the line there, 105 to 101 for the Cape Breton Highlanders. Mo Bolden with the finish off the grass. Great look there from Williamson to find Bolden. And that's a chemistry bucket right there. That's two guys who just know where they're gonna be on the floor. Bodiford's gonna push Williamson here. 
And they, that's going to be a blocking foul. And uh, the fans are going to let the refs know. That's a sign of a couple thousand referees uh, thinking, disagreeing with the ones on the court. We got a triple what from Little John. <laughs> so the Highlanders maintain possession on the inbounds pass. Bodiford feeds Gianti. Royce White giving trouble for with him. Tydron Beatty steps in for a deep two, no good. Herring Jr. with the rebound. Herring Jr. pushing the pace. No good, he's gonna pick up the foul. He's gonna shoot two here. And, and we've got another technical on the floor here, folks. Doug Heron Jr. picked up a technical despite drawing the call. So Heron Jr. is going to take his two shots, and I think we're going to go down to the other end for Cape Breton shots. So Heron Jr. can't finish his free throw, shot. first free throw shot. So he'll go one for two. And folks, if there's one thing the Lightning have on their side, the crowd is very much behind them right now. Big crowd here today. Upper bowl open. Pretty full up here, actually. March break for the children in London, Ontario. Lots of families here. Pretty full upper or lower bowl, too. I reckon this is probably one of the bigger crowds. They are, they are not letting the Highlanders get away with anything right now. Anything, anytime a Highlander touches the ball, the fans are in uh, full throat. So the Highlanders will grab possession. Tydron Beatty over to Massey. Massey cooled off a little bit in this fourth quarter, spreading the love around to his teammates. Bodiford over to Story. Story with one of those deep arcing threes. Too short off the rim though. Royce White with the rebound. He's gonna take it himself into the interior. Royce White collects his own and oh, what a man. finish. Royce White was not to be denied on that play folks. We have a tie game 106-106. Just under three and a half remaining here in the fourth. Bodiford over to Story. Story over to Massey. Would you listen to that crowd? Massey takes it to the rim and off the glass. Big answer, big answer. Herring Jr. Over to Mo Bolden. Mo Bolden's gonna drive baseline, finish off the glass. Great move by Mo Bolden there. Great back and forth pace to this game, Chris. We are in for quite a finish. Bodiford over to Story. Bruce Massey with the ball. Sets up his dribble. He'll take a three. No good. Short of the rim, off the glass. Royce White with the rebound. Royce White. That's off uh -oh. Gianti's foot. I think they're going to call a foul there on Kyle Johnson. Uh, he kind of grabbed on to Gianti, stopped Gianti from getting that ball. But I also think they're going to talk about a kickball. There's a couple different calls going on here. We'll see what they come up with. Foul is going to be on Kyle Johnson. I was also thinking they might give Gianti the clear path there, but it's going to be Cape Breton ball instead. So Bodiford. And 
And we're going to get a whistle. Looks like we're getting some clarification between the score table and the referees here. Oh, that's because the uh, the lightning are over the limit there, Chris. Oh, yeah, it should have yeah. been a shooting foul. So that is a shooting foul. So the foul was on Gianti, but he stepped off the floor for Chris Broswell. So I think they're deciding whether he has to come off uh, back on the floor to shoot. Well, no, I, I have no idea what's going on here. That should be a shooting foul, should it not? Kate Brighton over the limit, committed a foul on the floor. That should be shots. Oh, oh pardon me, it's Lo no, London over the limit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're confused here, folks, but we'll get it all figured out. In the meantime, the Lightning control the ball. Royce White with another rebound. That long pass goes awry. Another, Another turnover. turnover. So the Highlanders will grab a timeout here with just under two minutes left, and we'll take one more break. We'll see you on the other side. Brennan Jamison here with Chris Croucher. We return with under two minutes left in the fourth quarter. 108, 108, the Lightning and the Highlanders all tied up. Chris, we are in for one heck of a finish here. Well, I mean, two minutes left, tie game. I don't think anyone really came into this one expecting this, but the Cape Breton Highlanders just really putting up a fight here. Gotta say, I'm incredibly impressed by them. So Broswell over to Bodiford. Bodiford loses control of the ball. Malik Story over to Bruce Massey. I think you got to cover him there the way he's been shooting tonight. Down under 10 seconds to shoot. Massey's going to drive the lane. And what a block by Royce White. But no, they're, they're going to call goaltending. Yeah. The ball I think that like, was the right call. It looked like it was on its way down. You're not going to hear much argument from the Lightning on that one. Should point out Rice, or Royce White still looking for that one assist. Uh, to give himself that triple-double, but almost at 20 rebounds. Mo Bolton, he'll lose control of the ball. Great steal by Bruce Massey. Massey over to Story. What a block by Doug Herring Jr., The folks. point guard. The point guard got up there. What a return by Doug Herring Jr. down the court on what should have been an easy two-point play. Just absolute re rejection there. My goodness, Herring Jr. with control of the ball here. Flips it over to Bolden. Kyle Johnson. Down low to Royce White. And, oh, Broswell pokes it out of White's possession. They're going to say foul on They're the gonna floor. They're going to say foul on the floor. White loses the handle a little bit. And that's a big difference because instead of the two points, the Cape Breton Highlanders are not over the limit, so that's just two points basically off the board for the London Lightning. And that just gives them uh, reset the clock off the foul. 14 seconds with exactly a minute left here. We're going to see Braswell step out of the game. That's his fifth foul. So Williamson 
Royce White with the ball now. He's got to take over right here. I love this matchup. Gianti, big steps by Royce White. No good, though. Massey with the ball. And no, can't finish, but Massey's going to grab his own rebound. So the Lightning stuck four points here. So we're going to get a timeout here by the Lightning. Just an incredible, incredible run there. Bruce Massey. You know, it says junior in his name, but he's playing like a senior right here. He's playing like a man. I love it. And Chris, the, uh, the inability of the Lightning to make shots down the stretch here and really turnovers all game have just cost them here late. Well, you just got to value the dang ball. That's been the thing with the London Lightning all game. You have to put value on the ball. They've turned it over too much, and now you find yourself down four against a very hungry Cape Breton team. So we've got 45 seconds left here in the fourth. Still plenty of time, for sure a couple possessions left, but they've got to force a tough shot from the Highlanders here on the other end. And I mean, here's the thing. Turnovers are not an absolute poison. If you have a couple turnovers because you were trying to make plays, you can overlook it. But when it happens 21 times in a game and the other team only turns it over eight, you're either going to find yourself tied or losing. There's no real scenario you find yourself winning if you don't put more value on possession of the ball. And I think that's what really killed the London Lightning. They have to get a stop here because Cape Breton's really got some mojo going. So we will step back into the game. 44 seconds on the clock, the Lightning with possession. Starting five still on the floor for the Lightning. Down low to Royce White, he's back Gianti up. And Royce White's gonna go to the line here and shoot two. And you're okay with that result. You'd rather Royce White do his damage at the line than under the rim. So Chris Braswell is going to jump back into the game here. I, I would expect to see a lot of flopping between Gianti and Braswell. Braswell's got a little more offensive game to, to his game. So you're going to be seeing a lot of those two switching spots here. So White goes a big two for two from the line. Two point game here. Braswell with control of the ball. Bodiford. The Lightning pinching them off. Broswell's going to get an open look at the net. Massey with the ball. Royce White trying to get it away from him. Clock bleeding down here. Ten seconds to shoot for the Highlanders. Massey's going to push it. He tries to feed him, but no, and that's going to go off Royce White, unfortunately, but that's only going to give the Highlanders three seconds to shoot here. White thought the ball was going to be going the other way there. London, I think, was uh, thoroughly expecting the ball to be going the other way. So Botterford throws in, Massey Jr. Contested shot, no good. 15 seconds, shot clock's off, Massey loses control. So we've got a four on five, Harry Jr. to the rim. Williamson with the finish. And folks, the crowd is on their feet. The arena is going wild here for the London Lightning. Seven and a half seconds here. Highlanders will come out of this timeout with the ball. Hold on to your hats. The uh, coach of the Cape Breton Highlanders. Livid that he didn't get a call there. Is incensed. And uh, lucky he's got his team behind him because they probably prevented him from picking up a technical there. And at this point in the game, uh, a free shot for the Lightning. Not good. Yeah, I like Cordell Gianti there. He was just making sure making 100% sure where the Highlanders are going to be getting the ball, double checking with the refs, making sure everything is prepared for what's going to be the ultimate possession for Cape Breton here. Again, fighting for not just this game, but their season as well, trying to see if they can do what they need to do to sneak into the playoffs. And a big chunk of that is going to come down to whatever shot they can pull coming out of this timeout. So the Lightning come on the floor here with their defensive game plan. The Highlanders still on the bench trying to draw something up. Every team's got one of these in their pocket. 
Well, under 10 seconds left in the game, you're going to find your best shooter and you're going to give him the best look he can. If I'm if I'm Kate Breton, simple inbound to Bruce Massey and just let him, let him go. It's either going to be inbound to Massey or inbound to a guy who's just going to pass it right back to Massey because that's exactly how I would want to do that here. So Rick Bodiford will be the inbounder. Royce White giving him some struggles. Beatty though loses control of the ball and that's going to be a turnover for the London Lightning. Now London with a chance. And Tydron Beatty is the last thing you want to happen in this game and he just loses his feet and loses the ball. And oh, he's okay. Maybe just a little bit of pride on the line there for Tydron Beatty. And you know what, Marcus Capers, when Massey came around the screen, Capers was dr just draped over him. Marcus Capers shut Massey completely out of that play. Got to give a shout out to the wing on London there. So the Lightning will have control of the ball. We've got five seconds left in the game. And uh, I believe it's any man's choice. You want the ball in White's hands, well, Williamson's hands, Herring Jr., who's had a monster game as well. You know the way London played at the end of that at the end of the quarter here. This is almost gravy. The fact that they're tied, really, the way Cape Breton played in the back half of that quarter, they're a little bit uh, a little bit of luck to be in this position. Now they've got to make sure they get that bucket and make sure they can close out here. The way he's been shooting tonight, I'd almost be looking at Kyle Johnson, but I also think there's enough time left. You could go if you can get the right pass in low to Royce White and see if he can just back down and go in. Mo Bolton motioning to the crowd to get into it. He's going to be the inbounder here. Folks, this crowd is into this game. It is electric in here. Bolton down low to Williamson. What? Big block from Rick Bodiford. Massey, desperation three. Oh my goodness, oh. folks. That was as close as it gets. Massey almost throws up a three from the G on the Budweiser Gardens logo. A phenomenal finish to this game, but we're gonna get some overtime, folks. Are you kidding me? And it's only appropriate that a game that started with a half hour delay goes on a little bit yeah. longer. <laughs> it, it's just phenomenal, folks. The. Uh, the <laughs> Good thing it's March break for the kids in the building. I don't think Good this, thing they don't got school tomorrow. I don't think this night has gone the way anybody planned, Chris. Oh, my. The London Lightning with a negative double-digit turnover ratio, and they come out and tie the game. Well, they couldn't light up the scoreboard earlier. Now they can't stop lighting it up the way they've been playing here. Oh, my. Just an incredible finish to that quarter. Imagine Massey hitting that shot, too. And it's funny, that Williamson one, it was a very, very similar play to the one they used in the playoffs against Windsor last year, in which Williamson was able to convert the, at, right at the bucket. They also did it in the last minute of play in this game. So definitely a, the kind of play that they were looking to get. Just the veteran presence of Rick Bodiford, though, recognizing the play call and knowing where the Lightning wanted to go with it. And really, the, the last minute of that game was the best players playing the best basketball. You had Bodiford and Massey on Cape Breton, and then you had guys like Williamson and White on London. It was really the stars coming out to play there. So the Lightning and their fans, they're, uh, they're, you're getting every penny and dime out of this ticket tonight. You've seen just about everything there is to offer. Some of the fans still on their feet perhaps in disbelief at the end of that game. Oh, I hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so both teams are uh, very ready to get back into it. They jumped back on the court well in advance of time running down and their breaks. This has to be absolute agony for both teams though, considering how undermanned they are. And we're having some uh, scoreboard difficulties here. There we go. Hey. Five minutes in our extra frame. Highlanders will start with control of the ball. No delay needed. And let's get the last five minutes of this game underway. Although I guess I shouldn't speak so soon because I thought we had the last minute underway. 
Waterford, he'll drive baseline. Great pass. Over to Story for three. He'll step out to Beatty. Beatty over to Massey. Massey back to Story. He'll step inside. Two from the corner of the free throw. Beatty, no, no rebound there. Story collects it. Waterford's going to take corner three. Herring Jr. steps out quickly on him. He'll drive. Floater, two there for Bodiford. Veteran move right there by Rick Bodiford. Herring Jr. Over to Mo Bolden. I don't know if Where's the Love is an appropriate song in an overtime. Royce White trying to back Gianti up, finds his way and a flush for Royce White. And Cordell Gianti just cannot keep up with Royce White down low. The thing to keep an eye on is the foul situation for Cape Breton in their front court. Braswell and Gianti both in a little bit of foul trouble. Pardon me, Gianti's not, but Braswell is, so they haven't been able to play him as much. So Bodiford, he'll drive. Mo Bolton gets hands up, makes that shot difficult. Royce White collects the rebound. Royce. Backing Gianti up, off the glass, and the finish for Royce White. I like Bodiford slowing it down a bit here. Bodiford over to Malik Story. Williamson guarding him. Over to Tydron Beatty. Beatty back to Bodiford. Bodiford. He'll take the three. No good, short off the glass. Royce White with the rebound. As much as I like the slower pace, they did kill too much time on the shot clock before they got the offense going. That's where you get a rush shot. So Royce White, been saying his name a lot. He's firmly taking over this quarter. He loses control of that ball though. Oh. Williamson, great pickoff. The safety coming from the middle of the field. What an interception. <laughs> Mo Bolton down low to Royce White. And that's going to be a foul on Tydron Beatty. That's five on Beatty. He's got to be careful now. Williamson just great hustle down the court. You got to think these, these are some tired legs out there right now. For Cape Breton, the travel for London, you just spent a month on the road. Now you're doing overtime. Lots of guys, lots of guys bending and touching the knees there. So Royce can't convert the first shot. So he'll go one for two. Push that to a three-point lead, 117-114 for the Lightning. Bodiford over to Massey. Massey trying to find a friend. Still activating his dribble. He'll enter the interior, though. No good. Bolton collects the ball. And that's going to be Highlander's ball. Unfortunately, Bolden should have grabbed it. It looked like he thought it last went off a of Highlander. So that's a fresh shot clock and an inbound, inbounds for the Highlanders. Bodiford deep out to Massey. Over to Malik Story. Story's going to push it. Bolden, that huge arcing shot from Malik Story. Went from looking like nothing to nothing but net. <laughs> Two minutes left here in the overtime frame. Doug Herring Jr. And he'll lose control of the ball. Another turnover for the Lightning. Broswell collects that. Tired hands and tired bodies making for a little bit of a sloppy finish there for Herring Jr. Malik Story, big three, no good. Broswell can't collect the rebound. Herring Jr. does though. Herring Jr. is going to slow things down a little bit. Kyle Johnson urging him to. And again, Herring Jr. losing the ball. And smart by Herring Jr. And oh, what a smart play by first Tydron Beatty to deflect the pass from the finish to Mo Bolden. And then Mo Bolden smacking the ball off Tydron Beatty to collect a turnover for the Lightning. And every possession just so crucial at this point in the game. So Royce White, he'll try and drive, throws it up, and we're going to get an offensive foul here. That's number four for Royce White. So 
Bruce Massey. Setting things up down the offensive end. He's gonna push himself from the free throw line. Two for Massey. Still hot, still hot. He's just got a beautiful finish. Williamson driving. And he loses the ball. Kyle Johnson hustling back here. Massey can't finish. We're gonna get a foul though. Massey went down in just a heap there. He's gonna be okay. It's gonna be the third foul on Kyle Johnson as the Cape Breton Highlanders now go into the line. Get a chance to extend this lead. Just a battle right here. So Massey, name we've heard from a lot this game. The crowd letting him know that they're not behind him one little bit, and he misses the first free throw. Gotta make your free throws, And kids. the crowd, crazy about that. And they're gonna give him some love again. And one for two for Massey, so a two-point game for the Cape Breton Highlanders here, 119 to 117. Let's see if that free throw comes back to haunt them. Garrett Williamson driving off the glass and in. Great finish by Garrett Williamson. How about 40 points for Royce White tonight, Chris? Jeez, what a game, and one assist away from the triple-double as well. Massey 21 rebounds. driving. Foul on the Lightning there. Who's it on? It's going to be number five on White. Both teams over the limit. Every foul's a shot. The crowd once again trying to get inside Bruce Massey's head. That'll be good, one for one. Listen to this crowd, man. Games like this are what I love the NBL for. This is awesome. Down under 30 seconds in the overtime frame. Two for two for Bruce Massey. So the Lightning control the ball. We're gonna get a timeout here. Nope, no timeout. Thought the coach was motioning there. Herring Jr. dribbling out over to Mo Bolton. He thinks three. Down low to Royce White off the glass for two. 121-121. The Highlanders will take the time out here as they set up another 10-second offense. Just an amazing, amazing end to this game. Love that play by Royce White. Keep it simple, stupid. Just like they said on the office. I love that. That was just exactly what they needed to do. Get those two points, worry about everything else later. Did they leave some time here for Cape Breton? Yes. You don't love doing that. With 11 seconds though, you're still putting pressure on them. You're still making it difficult. Get your points, get back on defense. I like it. For Cape Breton, I know I said it before, this has to be Bruce Massey Jr. If I'm London, I'm doing exactly what worked for me at the end of the fourth. Capers just all over Bruce Massey Jr. Gotta get Marcus Capers on him. If Massey Jr. isn't open though, you need to make sure as a backup. The last one, no one really got open. If Massey Jr. can't get open, you need someone to make sure they're that guy. The way he's played, I'd be looking at Rick Bodiford as that second option. That is if he's not handling the inbound. He is their best passer. So another uh, second verse, same as the first here, Chris. We found ourselves in this The Highlanders will inbounds from their offensive zone. Yep, Bodiford is going to inbounds. On the floor with the Highlanders, Tydron Beatty, Bruce Massey, Chris Braswell, and Malik Story. That's Massey with the ball though. Looks like they're isolating. Just Massey, he's gonna drive and try and make the shot. Great Swat block. It. Oh, they're calling a foul. Is 
One second left, and they're giving foul shots to Massey. So they are going to give shots to Massey here once again. A couple thousand referees in the Bud Garden don't like the call. Royce White has. Uh, I think he picked up another foul. Yeah. So they're going to let Bruce Massey hear it one more time, maybe throw him off his game. Lightning are going to have a timeout as soon as this shot gets either made or missed. So Massey goes two for two. So the Lightning, uh, Chris, how many one second offensive plays you got in your playbook? Jeez, uh, here's the thing though. The Lightning in the past have had a one second play, alley-ooping it to, Ro to Garrett Williamson. But I, here's the problem. You've already played that card twice in this game. White talking directly to the commish. Royce White, uh, looks like he's officially ejected here. The Lightning, they need, to, they need to focus on drawing up a play here. They're getting much too involved in the emotions of the game. I understand uh, one second is not a lot of time to do anything, but you've got a chance to make a move. you got to make it. White's got to head back to the locker room now. Again, I think, I think you've done the law play to Williamson enough times. I think Kate Brett might be looking for it. You have to look short then. I know it's tough with a second left. But you have enough to get uh, just a quick catch and shoot off. Here's the other problem though. Their best catch and shoot guy, Ryan Anderson, not in the game. So this will be a tough one. And also with the technical, now you have a chance to make it three points. Pardon me, with the technical, Cape Wright would get the ball back. So that would be game. Costly. Yeah, yeah so Cape Wright gets the ball back after the technical, that's game. A really unfortunate way to end the game here, unfortunately, for the, the Lightning. And that'll be ball game, and Cape Breton comes into London. Stunning. Takes a win. Stunning. After seven straight losses, they knock off the London Lightning, who needed this win to move past the St. John Edge. That'll put the Edge in first place in the Central Division now. Uh, Costly so loss. End of the game. Once again, Cape Breton Highlanders, 124. Hometown London Lightning, 121. Brennan Jameson finishing things here with Chris Croucher. Uh, you can join Aaron and Justin on the post game on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us on this Knox from TV Gamecast.